invite Mr. Vivekanand Pani, co-founder and CTO, Ravri and Swati Bhaskar. Over to you, Swati. Thank you, Farhan. Namaskar, everyone. I hope we all are listening to a lot of good things here and learning and learning. And also a lot of different uh, walks of thought here as well. Uh, in fact, the last session just dropped off between, you know, for Vivek and me. And instead of, you know, boring you all with a tech session, we thought, why don't we continue the whole uh, new education policy conundrum as we, you know, I have this uh, fireside chat with Vivek. So, uh, Vivek, uh, recently we were in conversation with uh, Dr. Chintan Vaishnav who is the mission director for uh, Atal Innovation uh, Mission, uh, Niti Aayog. So during his conversation, he was bringing up how uh, one of uh, our students, right, um, because, you know, he was not very English uh, competent, uh, was not uh, admitted in any of the IITs, and uh, he applied for MIT, and he got full scholarship, right? Uh, only because the essay that he wrote, he said that don't judge me on how I write, but judge me for the emotions, judge me for what I want to do if I'm educated at MIT. And uh, what he wrote in the essay was that if he gets this opportunity and gets a full scholarship at MIT, he's going to turn things around at his hometown, which is Chandosi. It's a small town near Muradabad. Now, equality is a very strong word when we talk in the context of education, skill development, upliftment, right? So are we ahead or are we behind when we talk about in the context of NAP? Uh, so, uh, I, uh, so before we go into the context of NAP, I'll, uh, uh, I'll, I'll mention a little bit about my own experiences as well. Sure. So I got uh, educated in English medium. But I studied in a state-sponsored engineering college, which had a lot of uh, uh, students from, uh, you know, Odia medium schools. And they were struggling very hard with uh, English. So, uh, we, but, but I did not. Uh, I would say that in my interaction with most of them, I found them way more intelligent, capable, and skillful. Yet, it was only the language. While I was thinking that language is only a medium, the skills and the knowledge which were supposed to be power were not really finding the rightful, I would say, recognition. Uh, and definitely, therefore, it is a, a, a roadblock. Sure. So again, uh, bringing the context of the new education policy, right? Uh, it's been kind of a chaotic start for most of us, right? So what have been the challenges from a language standpoint to you know, have the technology support to fulfill NAP? And how do you think we can overcome those? OK, so the audience here is uh, you know, mostly in higher education. So I would expect many from, let's say, technical education background and other. So we will all probably understand what I would say right now. When we are talking about education today, we cannot bypass the digital medium. So the days of pen and paper, blackboards, slates, etc. We have sort of, um, uh, you know, we've been there, but we're still using, but we cannot be only on that. Now, when we talk about the digital medium, it becomes very important for us to understand how we will use our languages out there. Uh, in the previous panel, we also saw Dr. Bhattacharya mentioning that, you know, uh, there are initiatives to localize and so on and so forth, uh, translate, make course curriculums in local languages and so on. But there, is certain th there are certain things that are even more fundamental to it. When we are writing in Indian languages today, we end up introducing 97% errors in writing inadvertently. That means the scholar is actually knowing what is supposed to write. What they write, they feel that that is what it is. But in reality, for computing, it is not that. It is an error. This 
nature of introducing error into the knowledge that we are creating is specific to Indian languages. And there is a bit of a uh, background that goes into it. You know, when computing was created and text usage or language usage on computers were to be needed, standards were created. And the first standard that was created was ASCII, ASCII, American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Most of us we may have heard here. ASCII took about seven years to create a standard of only 26 uppercase, 26 lowercase English letters, 10 digits, few punctuation marks, few mathematical symbols, and only one currency symbol, the United States dollar. So 96 characters to be defined and laid out in how, what way it should be done took about seven years time, multiple iterations. You know why? It took so long because there was a lot of thought that went into how it should be designed so that it is, it is most efficient and easiest and intuitive for computing and usage of the language. Whereas when we have created Indian language standards today, the education system has got no sync with the standardization or language usage uh, uh, technology system, which means that even the alphabet set that we learn in schools is not what is there out in the computer. It is entirely different for every script and every language. So the students who are using, they get confused. And when they get confused, they introduce errors. And that is what we see. So when you do that today, most of your machine learning, the advanced AI that we are talking about, the search that the students will do to be able to retrieve knowledge and read, and all of that is going to be suboptimal and continue to suffer. That's great. Um, so we're coming to uh, just rubbing off from the, from the last question itself. You know, there has been in the last uh, 18 months, kahi na kahi, uh, either by force or by compulsion, voice, you know, it's either being said that, you know, India is going to be a Bharat first or a, or a, or, or a voice only country, right? Which um, I sometimes disagree, right? Because um, search results, the subtext may aata hai, number one. And we've never had a typing tool that... Sorry, my, my mic is gone. Uh, which has never been standardized in a country, right? So how do you think we can actually fulfill the first step itself? Because data is very important when you talk about AI, when we talk about NLP, right? If the data is junk, how can we train for the multiplicity of our languages and why should we standardize typing from an NAP perspective also? Okay, it's again a very uh, interesting question. I Okay. Uh, very interesting question. So uh, the, the device or the computer that we use, the first keyboard that was used on that was that of the QWERTY layout, that was the typewriter. And because it was hardware, there has been no change of the keyboard to be adapted to any other language of the world. Since the design itself began with English, so it is still the best keyboard for English. It is not the best keyboard for any other language. When we learn to write, it's a three-step process. We learn the alphabet, we learn the barakhadi, then we learn the yuktakshars, and then we start writing. English is not learned like that. You only learn the 26 letters, all the 26 letters are out there. But these three steps of writing itself, how does that translate into typing? If that is not taught to you, it is not going to be as intuitive. And that is what has become apparent. Even the, the, the largest platforms have cre uh, claimed that Indian language typing is three times more difficult than English typing, right? So yes, standardizing at least will make you know, a uniform uh, you know, way of typing so one can learn from the other. But more important than that is to have that standard and also introduce in schools so that people, when children know, you know the fundamentals of typing their languages, they will be able to use them better. So uh, Reverie has been very fortunate to have worked with the Ministry of Education to pass certain facets of the na new education policy, right? So how would you, you know, see the role, the tech role that Reverie's tech could play in uh, fulfilling uh, that for the Ministry of Education? 
So uh, I, a typical Indian student of whatever level of education, tends to use more than one language at a time. And today when we are talking about curriculums and education also being made available, we are talking about more than one language at a time. So it becomes important for us to be able to create knowledge repositories that can be retrieved efficiently. So that, you know, when students are searching to be able to read, they wouldn't probably know the exact uh, book, the exact chapter, and so on and so forth. So implementing all of that becomes critical. That means there has to be a uniformity and great indexing. We know that when, we, when it comes to terminologies and your phrases that are brought from Latin or from English and so on, which will all yeah, be there in higher education, which cannot be avoided, Unfortunately, we do not have a spelling standard for Indian languages, right? Because these are, these are English words. English words obviously don't have a native spelling, which means that different books and different students can write the same things in different ways. So these are certain, some of the challenges which need to be solved technically as well as in terms of education. That means creating certain amount of uniformity in all of those. So I guess what you're trying to say is that we have to really break free from the colonization mindset that we've, you know, we've been either, you know, been in an environment where we've passed on from the British Empire, right? That's very, very important, uh, you know, from NEP uh, implementation standpoint as well. The, the panel also spoke about, you know, the central digital library, you know, what are your thoughts on that and what are the tech and the language infrastructure that is a must have to fulfill this central uh, digital library? I think the most important things that would be necessary are first to break away from the conventional ways of creating books. Today we are still creating books. We use DTP but that is a non-standard way of creating text. So that would be non-searchable, non-retrievable. So creating books that are in a standardized format is very important. The second is to be able to create the uh, uniformity in uh, writing and spelling. All of these require advanced tools that can actually help an author to be able to find out you know, what is uniform, what is not, and so on. The third is great search and retrieval algorithms. The fourth, I would mention, are, you know, students will not only just study, but they will also create assignments, right? So for them to be able to use the right kind of tools to type and also, you know, uh, choose, uh, you know, uh, because different subjects have different kind of requirements to be able to do that. So that becomes very good. So these are the four things that would be absolutely essential in technological terms for somebody to start. Sure, that's great. So in the last panel uh, discussion, one of the gentlemen uh, referred to Google Translate, right? And you know how much we've been privy to Google for India events and even the global events, where multiple times, you know, the Indian languages have been misrepresented, right? Uh, in terms of uh, how display kaisa ho rai unka, right? So do you think is that a tech problem or is that an infrastructure standard problem? Uh, this, is a, this is a combination of problems. We have the standards that are ambiguous. The tech that are being created, so let us say the language used on your device is already gated. It is gated means unless Google, Microsoft, Apple, they decide to support your language, you have got no means to get that support. So it's not that Indian government decides 22 languages and therefore we will be able to do it, no. I can, you can have Apple devices not supporting Odia and then you are done for, right? So, so which is what I was trying to say, yes. So uh, the standards are ambiguous and the way that they, they implement has also been ambiguous. You, till today you cannot have the same kind of a document giving you the same experience in display and reading from Microsoft to Google to Apple. So we are all over the place. Oh. Yeah, we, sir. Sati, can we take the questions offline? We have killed our Indian language system. I would request all of you see, read 
professor harrison who was a ics officer in india who got four phd on indian language who came in 1871 and was a ics officer please read we have killed our language because we want one language english 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 that is the reason why unesco says i am telling unesco say 500 languages are disappearing from the world every year 500 languages are disappearing every year what dr pani says he say you only pep talks we don't know that even our grandchildren cannot talk our own mother tongues whether bengali or odisha when my daughter is abroad he can only speak odia and my he children will neither speak odia or understand odia so the question is that who has destroyed it? our systematic destruction of language because we propagate english and undermining our local language so you have to revive our mind thought and regarding the translation read bhagavad gita written in by 1000 people the original sanskrit bhagavad gita by baso is one but 100 people have interpreted 100 different way sir can we have your question please question is that who has been responsible for us, us. intellectuals entrepreneurs uh, sir you would like to answer that high chancellor high chancellor you are yourself damaging our your language nobody else is responsible sure so i think we are really pressed for time uh, so we make any closing remarks before we oh yeah take the honors he said who's responsible for it that's the question i think uh, uh, we are collectively responsible of course uh, there are some who are continuing to fight for languages there are others who probably wouldn't care and so on and so forth so people at at all grades would be there but i would still bring back this one thing that at the time of india getting self rule 75 years ago we actually did not decide to have professional educations in native languages and that has practically crippled our languages being able to provide better honor and livelihood to our own people so today without knowing a word of any indian language i can have a very honorable um, professional uh, living in india but somebody who doesn't know english but knows a scholar of uh, a native language will still suffer so that i think has been the primary reason because of which you know we have suffered in a lot of decision making uh, uh, <coughs> thank you sir uh, uh, just uh, farhan can i just take a half a minute for the closing remarks please so uh, any closing remarks we make no 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 closing remarks uh, i am very hopeful uh, uh, this is a this is a fight and with nep my hopes have actually you know uh, grown phenomenally i do see that india as a as a country so a, a nation of humongous potential which was actually uh, i would say uh, you know uh, we we did not have a way to uh, recognize that today we have uh, reached a point where that can practically happen the next 10 or 15 years should definitely show us amazing results you told one thing as we will definitely sir and trust you me we are uh, working we, we are already suffering but we are also working uh sathi i would request to take this off and we are already running out of time so we'll discuss it offline sir, sir. we can discuss this very important part because i sometimes have to implement in the regional language what i'm telling when facebook did not follow chinese rules china to get out can india tell google and facebook get out then you should show india is super power this is so good you have to show that india can manage without facebook we have hundreds of entrepreneurs we are full of software engineers why you cut your own bike cut why you facebook and google company same facebook same uh, google why not indian system That's exactly our point, so that we really need a mindset change. And on that note, thank you all for your patient listening. Thank you, Farhan and Sandeep. Thank you. Can we have a huge round of applause? <clears throat> I would now like to invite Dr. Tapris. I request you to please kindly be on the stage, ma'am. Please, sir, uh, to please give away uh, the token of appreciation to uh, Reverie. A huge round of applause.